Hello and welcome to Salt Nation TV. In this episode, I'm going to be discussing the six reasons you should buy a Mini Cooper S R53. I mean, it's a stunner. That's reason one. There you go, looks. Reason one is looks. It's a really, really great example of heritage being moved into a modern context. The modern era embracing retro culture. It's what you'd expect a Mini to look like in 2005, when this car in particular rolled off the production line. It's got that swooping, rounded look of a classic Mini at the front of the car. It, it flows all the way back with the wing mirrors, the side profile, and the way it moves into the boot. It really does take those... It really does take those classic Mini looks and goes, here you go, here's a modern car. The way it looks, the side profile in particular, really does make this car stand out. It does make people turn heads, not just because, especially in my case, it's quite a loud car, but it makes people turn heads because they go, oh, Mini, Heritage, it's a new Mini, it's a BMW Mini. And they say that, they still call it a Mini because of how it looks. Yes, it's bigger, but it's also safer. It's also faster. It's also better put together than classic minis. Although that is probably quite an arguable point. The interior, it's stunning to look at. Again, it draws from the classic mini era, that heritage, and it makes it something fresh for the modern era. I think that the heritage aspects from the classic mini have been really well captured in the looks of the first generation BMW Minis. Reason two, customization and modifications. They are relatively easy for an R53 Mini Cooper S. The R53 in particular. Yes, you know, if you're not a mechanic, you are gonna to struggle to do some of the bits under the bonnet, but little exterior mods, changing the color of things, like maybe making your side skirts body colored or adding chrome like I've done here or changing your wheels. I'm rocking some Mim and Malfies, which don't exist anymore as far as I can tell. These are from the late 90s, early 2000s and really do add to reason one, the looks, but are also a, a good case of modification and customization. So most of your modifications are gonna be mechanical. For instance, I've changed the exhaust. I haven't got a standard exhaust. I have a Toyo Sports exhaust, which has a bigger downpipe and bigger twin tailpipes makes a bit more sound, sounds a little bit more aggressive, happy days. But I've also uprated the brakes, that's a modification. It's not the standard brakes, which are, in all fairness, pretty awful. I've kept the standard calipers because I'm not made of money and can't afford a big brake kit, but I've uprated the discs and pads. I've got MTech drilled and grooved discs. I've got Brembo pads. It does help with the stopping power. Most of the modifications that you'll find yourself doing are gonna be under the bonnet though, in the engine bay. Now these cars out of the factory are still pretty swift. You know, power to weight ratio is quite high, but there's always things you can do to make them a little bit faster. There's things you can do to improve the handling. What can you do as a modification that's relatively cheap and gives you a bit more power? Well, reduce your pulley size. I've got a 15% pulley reduction, but in hand with that, I've also uprated the top mount intercooler. So again, you've got modifications that are relatively cheap and easy to do. Alongside that, I've also got colder spark plugs. I've also got a fresh Biru coil pack, which, you know, new coil pack, let's have new leads. Mr. Retro leads, I've got eight mil leads instead of the standard seven. All these little things are modifying the car and it's quite easy to do. Then you've got your handling mods. Excluding big brake upgrade kits, you've also got coilovers. Now there's a huge amount of coilovers out there. You can spend a lot of money, you know, over a thousand pounds on quality, quality bill steins, or you can go for Stance X or something like that. Raceworks, I think the other one's called. I might be wrong, but you don't have to spend a lot to improve the handling. Now I think the standard sports plus suspension that I got with my facelift R53 is, is pretty adequate, but then the stance isn't quite as nice. It's, yeah, I'd like it to be a little bit lower. So I will be looking at coilovers and they should also improve the handling. So modifying and customizing an R53 Mini Cooper S is relatively easy and not ridiculously expensive. There are far more expensive cars to modify than this. 
Reason three, the engine. Now, engines should be quite important to most people when they're buying cars, but the amount of cars I see on the roads that are a heap of crap suggests that people don't really care. The engine you've got in this first generation Mini Cooper S is phenomenal. It's the Tritec W11 or W1116B, if you want the full engine name, is a phenomenal inline four cylinder engine. It's got 16 valves and it's supercharged. If that isn't a reason to buy one, I don't know what is. Whereas other hot hatches from this particular era, 2005, would have chosen a turbo, BMW and Mini said, no, we're not gonna go turbocharged, we're gonna go supercharged. And so you've got a supercharged engine. I can't think of any other hot hatches from this era that are supercharged. I really can't. So that's, ignore the rest of the engine, that's a reason, surely. But the engine is a superb engine. Yeah, it gets a bit leaky as, as time goes by, but a lot of engines do. Just replace your gaskets, do your maintenance, it's all gonna be fine. But this Tri-Tech engine is, is phenomenal. The Eaton 45 supercharged Tri-Tech engine that is in this car won two awards in 2003, one of which was at the International Engine of the Year Award in the 1.4 to 1.8 litre category. Now, that was, that was pre-facelift. That was the original engine that came out of the factory with 163 brake horsepower. So that engine was great. For the facelift model, they inched out another seven brake horsepower from factory and you've got a great engine. Reason four is quite similar to reason three. Performance. Now, you've got a great engine. That's a great base to have. You've got a 1.6 four cylinder beast, supercharged, top mount intercooler, you're winning every day. But how does the handling stack up to having such a good engine? Now, even with the standard sports plus suspension that my Mini came with, the handling is phenomenal. You don't necessarily have to go down the coilover route because the suspension is good. It's very good. Around corners, you can accelerate, it's not an issue. On straight, you can really build up speed. If you drop gear and then just give it a good hoon, this car builds momentum so quickly, and then it's also got the handling and performance to stay with it. I don't at any point worry about taking this car round bends at speed. I do worry about the braking, so let's ignore that from the performance and handling section, because I have mentioned already in the modification reason two that yeah, you can do a brake upgrade, and I suggest you do. The general handling of this car is, is great. The way it's balanced, each wheel at the corner of the car, it puts down power and can handle corners. It eats corners, it loves corners. That's what this car's really all about. This is where you get the best out of the car, is B-road bashing, like this country road I've got here, the other aspects of performance, such as fuel efficiency, well, you know, I kind of want to scrub over that a little bit because, yeah, it's not the most economical car. Um, I get about 24 miles to the gallon, which isn't great, but I have a lot of fun as I blaze through that petrol. So, yeah, you weigh it up. You've got a car that drives well, you've got a car that handles well, You've got a car that you can customise. Yes, it drinks petrol. I'll accept that, I'll enjoy that, and I'll drive with a smile on my face. Reason five, price. Now, I paid in 2019, 1100 quid for my R53 Mini Cooper S. It had 104,000 miles on the clock, needed a bit of work aesthetically, needed a little bit of work maintenance wise, but 1100 quid all the same. Yeah, I bought it from eBay. Yeah, I virtually bought it blind because the pictures that I looked at weren't great, but it was the color that I really liked. And it gave me a base car to build on. Now, 1100 quid for a facelift 2005 R53 is pretty cheap. And I got a good deal. I think I got a bit of a bargain. But then I have spent, and I'm not gonna say the figure right now, wait for another video and a video that I won't let my wife watch. I've spent a fair amount on it in upgrades, modifications and maintenance. But for a base car, 1100 quid, that's excellent. Right. The price, 
I mean, they're still relatively low at this moment in 2020, but yet they're getting more and more collectible. So I would say that in the next 18 months, you're going to see them rise in price. So now is the time to really, really go out and buy one. And the reason that maybe in 18 months time they're going to go up in price is down to reason six, the last of the reasons that you should buy one. And that is parts availability. Yes, you can still buy brand new parts of the car, but the used parts market is huge. It really is. It's a massive, massive deal. There are companies that solely exist to sell secondhand or used car parts for minis. And that suggests that a lot of them are being broken. Now, from one point of view, I don't like the idea of breaking cars. I think if, if your car isn't doing what it needs to do, then fix it. Fix it. Unless there isn't a fixable thing to do. Like there's a, there's a guy that follows the channel that is a really nice guy. I think he's been watching the channel since day dot and he got quoted two and a half grand to replace his rear quarter panel. Now that's ridiculous money. That's far more than he paid for the car in its entirety. So yes, breaking cars in those scenarios makes sense. But should you not have a bill of two and a half thousand pounds to fix a rear quarter panel, you don't need to break it. They're not that hard to fix. You can pick up an engine for less than a thousand pounds. You can pick up a crate engine for 1300 quid. I mean, maybe even cheaper, but I mean, I, I recently looked at the loan website and I saw one there, basic 1300 quid. So 1300 quid for a new engine, that's not bad, especially if the rest of the car is in decent shape. So fix it rather than break it unless you haven't got any other option. But then without breaking it, we'd have less parts. So it's a, it's a situation where I don't really know how to feel about it. I'd rather fix a car than break it for parts. But at the same time, ooh, if cars weren't being broken for parts, then parts would be more expensive, which would mean fixing cars is a lot more difficult. And then you're like, oh, where do I go from here? People want the first gen, the R53, over an R56 or an F56, which is still a good car. And they want them because of the supercharger, because of the engine, because of the general look of the car. And I can't blame them, I did. So finding parts to fix these cars at this moment in time is relatively easy and pretty inexpensive. So that's another reason to buy the car. Does it increase the value having more of them broken? Yes, it will eventually. But does it mean that at this moment in time you can pick up cheap parts? Yes, it does which is great. So that's it, the six reasons that I haven't gone into that much detail about to buy a Mini Cooper S R53. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you'd like to see more, then check out the Salt Nation TV YouTube channel, turn on notifications, and please, please subscribe. And until the next time, I've been me, you've been you, and well done for that.